The turbulent reign ends in abdication. Alan Pardew leaves Newcastle unexpectedly, but little has been predictable in a restless four years at St James's Park. Still, his time on the Tyne has been longer than many imagined when he was appointed in 2010, and that includes his colleagues. I've had a lot of texts from managers saying, you know, you must be mad going in there. You know, it's such a tough agenda and the history of the ownership, etc., with managers. But, you know, it is a massive club. Eyebrows that had been raised at his appointment were furrowed less than a month after Pardew's arrival. Newcastle lost to League Two Stevenage in the Cup. But at the end of that first season, he brought in the likes of Demba Barr and the Premier League's great underachievers overachieved, finishing fifth. Pardew was manager of the year, but the clouds which St James's Park attracts began gathering. Earlier this year, a storm broke. Pardew was banned for headbutting Hull's David Myler, and his team's poor form brought focus onto the manager and the club's owner, Mike Ashley. Both the form and the furore continued into this season. Again, Pardew survived and, at one point, thrived. But now he's turning his back on a team in ninth to join one in 18th. He might just think, you know, it's, it's time for his change. He, he's still got his place down at London. He's a London lad. Um, he's got a great affinity with Crystal Palace. And I think it's something that he thinks he can, he can throw himself into and, and, you know, enjoy again. The Palace will feel more like home for Pardew. where he'll be able to draw on the reserves of goodwill he created by scoring a winning goal for them in an FA Cup semi-final. But it will only be comfortable for so long. The Eagles are in a relegation battle, one that will test even Alan Pardew's survival instincts. Patrick Geary, BBC News.